Right, today I get to use a tool that I bought about two months ago and I still haven't got to use it yet. If you use that middle one, they can slide as you're tightening it up this side and this side. If they're not proper secure, those brackets will just slide out and slide in. A lot of people said to me about this tool. So we'll take this out, get it drilled, get it screwed and into position. But it's a brilliant tool. Every, every plumber should have one. And as you can see, the kitchen's arrived. So I finally bit the bullet a while ago, bought one. In fact, while we're here, hit that subscribe button. I know you're watching and you haven't subscribed. Hit it, hit it now. I've stitch drilled all the way across the top of there now. So with just a little pair of grips, I'm hoping that this will Right, welcome back to the channel. It is another Monday, another fresh start to the week. Hope you all enjoyed the last video. I had a lot of feedback from it. I know it was a little bit different, a bit of a Q&A, but a lot of people said that they really enjoyed it. So, you know, it's not always plumbing. Sometimes I like to just mix it up a little bit, chuck a little, a different video in there. Anyway, we're back at the barn today, being Monday. And as you can see, the kitchen's arrived. It's a massive old kitchen, to be fair. Um, but what this has done has found, or not found an issue, it's, it, there's a bit of an issue with the primaries. These were two flow return primaries to the manifold over there, 28 mil primaries. Now, in the kitchen they've got a, a fridge going back here and I think a dishwasher going back there. There's no service void at the back of them. We were under the impression there was a service void that was going to, well, these are units, but there was going to be a service void the whole way along. Hence why we've put them there and lagged them like that. But it turns out they're too far off, or at least where the fridge and the dishwasher is, is literally flush back to the wall. So what we're going to do, the only way we're going to do it is stick an elbow on there, cut out the whole length of that, and just sink these two into the wall, seal them all in, lag them, but get them into the wall and then pop back out further down there. Again, these are little things that along the way, along the build, you know, it, it happens, these things happen. So that's the way around it. That's what we're going to do with it. So I've cut off, cut these two off now. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take these clips off, get it back, get it back in, cut these two lengths out, solder elbows on, then we can sink them in the wall and connect back on to where we've cut here. I've had this Copex 28 mil cutter for years and it just sits in the van but every now and again it comes in pretty handy such as times like this so that's all four ends cut off what we do take about the clips now take these pipes out of the way and then we'll cut all this plaster, well, I don't know who's cut that, it's not very straight, but we'll cut that all the way along and expose that in there to see where the pipe's going to sit. So I'm going to use this CAT multi-tool. I've got sent this and i also got sent, let me show you, i am also got sent this hammer drill as well. I'm going to try out, see what it's like, and then I'm going to give that away and give that multi-tool away to someone, to one of my subscribers on the channel. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming in a couple of weeks, but I want to see what they're like first, uh, just so I can let you know. But I'll be giving them away anyway. Nice big cordless 18 volt hammer drill and a nice little cat multi-tool. But we'll use that anyway to get this out and see what it's like. Well, this is what we're up against. As I said, Scott or one of the labourers had already cut that out, so I was just following on from that. But obviously, because it's insulated board, we've got to get right in to get it along. But we've got to hack all that lot out all the way along there. <sighs> it's just what you want on a Monday. 
Well, that's it. That's that channel chopped out all the way down. So what we'll do now is get some clips put along the back and then we can elbow back into that cupboard along and connect back onto these pipes here. <coughs> onto here. As I say, it's a bit of a bit of a big channel, but it was already sort of scored out. So I've just followed where they've cut out, pulled that out, and then obviously they're gonna patch it all back in afterwards and seal it back in. But at least now we can sink them pipes back into that wall and uh, get it connected back up. So we've got the clips in place now, and I've just clipped this bit of pipe back into place. What I'm gonna do is obviously an elbow there, elbow into the end there, we can pull that back in. The same with that, and then connect up down the far end. And then what we'll do afterwards, we'll get the lagging back on that, and then I'm sure Scott's gonna put something across the front there and seal that in before the, uh, before the kitchen goes in. So that's first thing on a Monday. Hopefully the week gets a bit better than that. The old screwdriver hack, push the screwdriver into the wall just to hold the pipe in position exactly where you want it. So we'll solder this one into place, solder the top one into place, and then we can work the bottom ones in. I've got the heat mat there just because we've got this insulation membrane there, bit of insulation there, so we'll just take our time and solder that up and then get the other one done. that's that pipe work sunk into the wall now so the kitchen fitter can now get so we can get all his units back we've bought the autumn colds up ready to go into the back of that unit we'll go and get a bomb bring the waste up and then right here as i said because we've only got 50 mil here we've insulated the back i'll have to clip that back in so what we've done we've insulated the back of it so that the unit will push up against that but yeah that's the uh, phone returns in for that manifold. So that's the pipe work in for the kitchen now set. The fitter can carry on, get the rest of that kitchen in and we can just pipe up into the unit as and when he's done. So now we're gonna concentrate on getting the basin in here and the toilet in here. It's the bathroom where we put the shower in at the tail end of one of the Fridays a few weeks ago. But what I've done, I've just quickly had a look and the top of this needs trimming out along here. This little mark here is the top edge of the pan. Now, the flush pipe has just been pushed down ever so slightly, whether Terry just didn't want to cut that out too far because he wasn't sure where the pan was going to sit. Don't know, but what we'll do, we stitch drill that across with the eBay special drill bits. Across there, knock that bit out, 
And then also what I'm going to do is replace that with a flexi connector because the pan sits, the actual outlet for the pan sits quite far in. And some of you may remember there's underfloor heating going through here, but we did work out exactly where the pan's fixing. I think the underfloor heating finishes about here. So we've got all that room there to fix, not a problem. So let's get this pan into position. So what I'm gonna do is just stitch drill a load of holes along there and then we can just tap that and it'll come out and it'll just give us enough room to lift that flush pipe up. You know, it's only got to come up probably half inch or so just to line up with the back of the pan. So as I always say, these drill bits are perfect. As long as you keep them wet. I've stitch drilled all the way across the top of there now, so with just a little pair of grips, I'm hoping that this will just come apart like that. Perfect, so just stitch drilling it. The pan's gonna sit around there. So now we can just lift this flush pipe up where it needs to go and just get it in the back of the pan. So we'll offer this into place now, mark around the pan, mark where the out brackets have gotta go in the size to fix it down get all that into position and then swap that out, I say, for a flexi and get it all in and pushed in in one. I don't know if you can make it out, but I've just pushed the flush pipe into the back of the pan. So now if we just push that back, that is exactly the position it's gonna be in. So we'll mark around the pan so we know where it is. And then what I do is just mark directly where they're going to go in the same this side and then what we'll do we'll pull the pan out and we'll measure underneath I'll show you so that line is the outside of the pan and what we'll do what I'll do anyway is then measure this little lip, this little lip under here, and that is from that front finish line there to where the lip is there, is where the owl bracket goes. So, where's my tape measure? So then, we'll just offer that, because that's the outside edge, as I say. 40 mil there. 40 mil there, and then we know the owl brackets will sit there and there. And then what I also do, a few people I know do this, so we'll drill a hole there and a hole there, because if you bolt it on that centre piece, it can slide back and forth. If you was to put it in there, it could move like that, whereas if you bolt it through there, it's going to be solid. So fixing those brackets, them owl brackets down with the double screws is perfect. If you, I say, if you use that middle one, they can slide as you're tightening it up this side and this side. If they're not proper secure, those brackets will just slide out and slide in. Whereas with those four screws in it, they're not going anywhere. So we'll now get this pan in. We'll, I'll switch this out for it, flexi, get it all in and push it back in and get it screwed through the side. So I've switched that bit of pipe that was in there out for a Jolly Flex and we've got that set ready to go now. So what I'm gonna do is lift the pan into place. The good thing with these flexes is we can connect that in there and then lift the pan in. So it's past these lugs, slide it in, offer that into place. I shall show you exactly how we're gonna do it. So we push that flexi onto the back of the pan so it sits quite far in <coughs> right that's on and then we can lift it over the lugs that we've and then, so that's it that's over them lugs now and then what we can do is off of this in because we've got a little bit of play on that cistern the other side of the wall so we can push it back as far in, connect that in, like so. So that's, that's now in. 
the bottom flex is in and then when we push this pan back now done that's it and you've got to have sometimes you've got to have a bit of confidence i've done this loads of times so i know that that will be fine obviously we'll test it check it make sure it's all okay but sometimes when you push things and you can feel that just it's hard to explain you sort of get it with time really you can feel it as it locks into the pan so that's now locked in we know that's all right we can now get the screws in through there so what it is that will sit in like so and then they'll go through there and bite on to the mail brackets that we've put in and because you screwed them in we know the brackets aren't going to shift when we tighten them in right so that's that pan in now i've got the toilet seat on as well it's fixed at the bottom both sides as you can see and then before we clear it all down we'll seal around the back of it um, but that'll be later because we've got all the bath and everything to do anyway so right let's get onto this basin then this basin's got like a frame a chrome silvery frame it's got to go around the outside and then the the basin sits on the top so we'll get this into position and work out what we've got to do we've also put some talon shrouds around the back of those pipes to cover them up so we're on to the basin now fitting the frame for this basin when we put this pipe work in originally we worked out roughly where this basin was going to sit and we worked out where the frame was going to sit so coming back to it we've got the waist right in the center of where the frame's going to go so i've marked up on the wall where it's going to be bolted to so we'll take this out get it drilled get it screwed and into position and then we can drop the basin onto the top and begin to get it connected up we've bolted it right back here um, this floor is running out ever so slightly so the nice thing with these burlington frames is we've got a little bit of adjustment on this side so i've adjusted that up and we're perfect in the middle and i've also got a couple of talon chrome surrounds to go over them pipes so obviously they're clipped together but when that's in that'll be like that and there's also one to go on the waist so we set that we level with that we'll get the basin on now which is just here get that on and just make sure that's all level and ready to go so this is the basin that we've got going on here so now it's leveled up sits a treat on there in fact while we're here hit that subscribe button i know you're watching and you haven't subscribed hit it hit it now so this is where it comes down to where we worked out exactly what's got to go in where when we first fixed it so if i just pop the camera on there you'll see this is the waist so let me slide on the shroud first it's going to cover that back bit like that so obviously that's going to push right back to where we need it to go pop that on there with the washer and then this little washer here sits into there like so and then we can put that in this is where it all lines up as per the first fix that's why you, like i said before you've got to take your time and make sure everything just lines up so that's there there we go look at that see plan it all out in the first first fix it makes a second fix hell of a lot easier so we can just tighten everywhere up now i can tighten along with these traps you can you've got a little bit of movement on these up and down which is perfect so there we'll tighten then what we'll do we've got chrome elbows we've got chrome elbows to go on here so i'll come off there with the chrome elbow into an isolation valve and then all you'll see from this angle not that you'll see anything because you'll be up here but if you was to just stick your end under you will see everything's chrome, match up with the frame, match up with the Burlington base. So Burlington taps, we've got the heads to go on. It's just a really nice setup. That will finish off this bathroom. So what I've decided to do underneath here is I haven't got a chrome a pair of chrome elbows here, so I've got to pick some up. So I've just mocked it up so it's gonna look like that and then what i'm going to do with this bit is talon who make these shrouds going back do chrome sleeve so i'm going to get that and just put it from the top of there up to there just so i could get that in um people will probably go oh you could have used chrome there and 
scraped it off the end. I've never been a fan of scraping the chrome pipe back to copper. So that's what I'm going to do. Get two chrome elbows for there, one for that side and one for that side, and then the chrome talon shroud cover to go on that. And that'll finish off under that sink of tree. So that just about finishes this bathroom off. We've just got to clean down now, silicon round at some point, but that, that won't happen for probably a good couple of weeks yet because there's still dust and crap and stuff like that in the air. But pop the heads on. It's granite going along the top there, that's got to be cut and put into position. But to another bathroom near on, ticked off by for them little bits I've got to pick up. Right, today I get to use a tool that I bought about two months ago and I still haven't got to use it yet. A lot of people said to me about this tool, that it's a brilliant tool, every, every plumber should have one. So I finally bit the bullet a while ago, bought one and I've yet to use it. So today, we're finally going to get to have a go with the Nurad tap spanner kit, the Tapex kit. I haven't used it yet. I've been dying to use it. So let's go in and see if we can get it used. So we've got this tap. It's just playing up. It's leaking from here. It's leaking from here. So the customer has been out, bought a new tap, pretty much like for like. So what we're going to do is get these drawers out these are hopefully it's just a little little bit on the bottom or somewhere that you just pull across and that'll come out so we've got to take that one out obviously the bottom one out as well and it's in there somewhere we've got to get to but hopefully this is going to come into its own so follow me first go with it I've opened it up, there seems to be quite a lot of bits and bobs in there, but we'll have a look and I'll give you a first go review of how it works. Right, that's the drawers out, let's have a look. Right, let's get this one out, obviously isolate here, isolate here, disconnect and get that one out and see where we're at. Isolate the tap. It's fairly straightforward. There we go, one tap out. Now I'm hoping this Nurad kit comes into its own here, getting up around there, the ultimate test. We shall see. So this is where I think we choose our weapon of choice in the Nurad kit. I assume, I say, this is the first time I've even opened it and got anything out. So that one's there. I assume we're going to go like that, an extension bar maybe. Right in there maybe. Right, okay. So I've got that there with a bit of movement on it. An extension bar and then that. Right, let's give it a go. I assume there's, there's probably going to be plenty of people out there telling me, oh, you should have used this fitting with this fitting, but I think that's the right one. We'll give it a go. There we go. I'm impressed. Works a treat. Let's just make sure the tap's level and get tightened up. Right, there we go. That has made life getting to that nut a lot easier. There we go. Verdict on the Nurad Tapex kit. Pretty impressed with that to be fair. Worked well. And it's perfect with that ratchet and that bendy end to get in. I do know some people said to me it doesn't fit. Is it one taps with the really long stem on them? But we'll wait and see how we get on with that. But yeah, first impressions, pretty good. 
So there's another couple of little jobs to do on this house. We've got to change this toilet seat and we've got to do a little bit of silicon on his shower upstairs. But I've just come to take this old one off. Now we've all been there, we all know that the bolts underneath and the nuts underneath are never going to come off. So this is where the old handy multi-tool with the metal bit comes in. So we'll just whip that off there, whip that off there drop the seat off and then get the new one on. I'm going to use this cat, what is it, DX41. And as I've said in the previous video, I've got one of these to give away and an SD 80 by SDS drill that I will let you know in an upcoming video because I want to use this a little bit more, make sure it's all right and use the drill as well. Make sure it's all right and let you know a bit about it. But I've got that and a drill to give away. So let's get this cut off. There we go, sorted. So that summed up the start of the week, little bit of progress at the barn, little bit of progress, catching up on a few jobs that I've got to get to. There's always an endless list of stuff to get to with me, uh, jobbing around here, there and everywhere. But if you've liked what you've watched, again, as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next one.